What's What's going on groovy boys and girls? My name is Aiden. I am a studio drummer who has been drumming for over 15 years and I've been a drumming instructor for over two years now as well. I want to take a swing at a question that I asked myself and others a very long time ago. Now Aiden, what is this question? What could it be? What does this mean for the future of my drumming? Well basically the question is what are some simple things to keep in mind that will help me avoid bad habits as I improve my drumming? I asked this question a lot a long time ago, and let's just say a lot of the responses that I got were lacking in one way or another. They weren't giving me the closure I needed, or they were counterproductive in some way um, by following the advice that they were too vague or they were too specific for me. Um, so I figured because I found a lot of the responses to just be lacking in one way or another that I would give all of you guys my top 10 ideas that I really wish had been given to me when I was first asking, you know, asking questions to figure out how I could get better at my drumming. This video is going to briefly go over 10 concepts that people who want to improve at drumming should prioritize in order to maximize their growth and minimize the bad habits that they develop along the way. In the not so distant future, I will be making full length juicy groovy videos on most if not all of these groovy juicy topics that I'm going to address in this more generalized video and the links to all of those videos will be down in the description as soon as they are made public uh, just with a guide to all 10 uh, separate videos that I'm going to make on the 10 topics we cover here. So these concepts are kind of placed in the order from ones that I find the least interesting or like the most overstated to the ones that I find the most interesting or the most you know understated but I really would recommend watching the whole video because all of these are pretty much equally important. Uh, I'm just kind of ordering them in a way so that we can kind of you can get the ones that you've heard already out of the way. And with all that out of the way, for you guys, let's get groovy. So coming in first at number 10, we are going to be talking about some basic technique for you guys. When people answer these kind of vague general improvement questions related to drumming, technique is like almost without fail the primary if not the exclusive focus and they're kind of right without a good technical foundation it can be very hard to improve your playing in other more fulfilling areas and taking the time to make sure you're holding your sticks and hitting your drums in a way that is comfortable and effective now will help you develop a more consistent sound prevent injuries and of course progress faster in the future so you can get onto that more you know juicy polyrhythm jazz fusion stuff that you've always wanted and tried to play our second concept, or number nine, however you want to put it, I don't really care, is your technique consistency. So this second area of focus is one that could arguably be slotted in with our first entry, but I think it deserves its own time in the groovy spotlight. Uh, technique is important, but so is being consistent in your technique. Uh, learning techniques is not enough. You have to also, I'll explain it. Technique is not all of drumming. In fact, it mainly serves as the foundation on top of which your drumming develops. Uh, if that foundation is inconsistent or cluttered, then your drumming can't rest on top of it securely, let alone be built any higher with you know, any semblance of stability. A perfect example of this lies in how one approaches doubles on the kick drum. Uh, some people use like a heel toe technique they're kind of like they're using their heel first and then their toe and others use a technique that doesn't use the heel I, they often call it the slide method I like to call it the, the, the heel up method both of these techniques are effective and widely used however using the heel toe method in like beats for example and then the slide method for your fills or for like your gospel chop stuff is not something I can recommend this can lead to confusion when learning new patterns and different skills and can just make bass drum mastery nearly impossible to achieve efficiently. Imagine for example if Roger Federer used like a two-handed backhand for cross-court shots and then a one-handed backhand to hit it down the line. Like both techniques would lose some of their effectiveness and his one-handed shot wouldn't be as iconic as it is today. I, I do play tennis. This is 
you guys are, this is a drumming channel, what am I doing with my life? In short, to simplify it for you drooling drummers out there, uh, it's important to keep your technical arsenal as concise and easy to navigate as possible to maximize effectiveness and minimize confusion when it matters most. Playing Rush songs instead of rudiments. You know who you are. Go practice. Concepto numero tres, warm ups. Yay! Who would have thought getting good at something requires us to do things that aren't always super fun? I mean, hard work? I'm a drummer. That shit's for piano players. On a more serious note, warm ups are extremely important. Uh, but are often rendered fruitless and purposeless by a lack of understanding as to what a warm-up is supposed to do in the first place. A warm-up is a process one goes through in order to prepare themselves for further learning, not something someone does to learn new things. You don't warm up for a singing performance by hitting your highest note and then belting out the song that you're learning, like just going straight to the hardest part and trying to learn how to belt that hard part of your song. As such, you're not going to warm up for drumming by playing paradiddles as fast as humanly possible or trying to learn a new polyrhythm. Again, you know who you are. Make your warm-ups easy, but engaging. Gather four to seven exercises that you can memorize and play confidently, but that, like, gets you ready and prepared to start practicing, you know, your more advanced concepts in an effective manner. Alright, coming in number fourth, or at number six, again, top ten, or just a list, in order, I don't know, which one is it? Um, we're talking about practice structure. Routines are essential to a healthy life, and as such, having a structure to your practicing leads to healthy doses of groovy drumming progress. Practicing a lot is cool, uh, but it doesn't automatically follow that your practice actually gets you anywhere even remotely effectively. If you don't know what you're practicing, if you don't warm up, if you sit down at the kit, wait about 10 seconds before sighing and half-heartedly starting to play rudiments from memory instead of reading them from a sheet, you're probably just messing around on a drum kit for a lot of time without really making any improvement, and you're sad, and you don't want to practice anymore because you're sad and you haven't been improving, even though you're spending a lot of time on the kit. You know, it's, 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 it's a sad thing. I've, I've struggled with it too. Um, Two things, setting goals and setting more goals. Uh, also there's that little bit about keeping track of your progress, so I guess it's three things. Three. That number. Before you even start warming up, figure out what it is you aim to accomplish in the practice session you're having. Uh, if you're already working on something more daunting, still find something that you can make improvement on, a noticeable improvement on that practice session. And then after you finished it, make sure that you jam for another half hour instead of setting new goals for yourself. Um, and then, you know, document what you did in that, in that practice session. Uh, document what you did, what you worked on, and also if you got where you wanted to or if you didn't. Uh, if you did, then you're clear to move on to the next step. If not, make sure that you don't neglect the step that you're not, you know, up to par on yet. Improvement might not happen as fast as you want. As a matter of fact, it rarely does. And when it does, it should be a surprise. But setting those goals and practicing with an awareness and an intent towards achieving those goals and knowing what those goals are will keep you from thinking you're plateauing when you're just not in a healthy practice mindset. Number six, or the fifth item on the list. That's confusing. Practice consistency. Yeah, 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 I got it. Another one that I only have to separate because I talk too goddamn much. Uh, practicing with structure is great, but not if you have no consistency with your practicing. 
Again, like I said, practicing a lot isn't the same as making progress, as, as many of you probably already know way too well. Again, you know who you are, all that. Funny joke, drummers are stupid, whoa! The reason for this lack of growth could possibly be that your practice lacks consistency or stability. I'll make it simple for you drummers out there. Practicing for 10 minutes every day is far and away more effective than practicing for eight to nine hours every week or two. Or seven, or millennia. Again, you know who you are. Whether you have a dedicated practice schedule, a daily commitment to practice, a daily time that you're supposed to practice from, or what, however you want to boil your turnips for Thanksgiving, a more consistent routine will yield more consistently productive results. Before we move on, defining consistency. Basically what it comes down to is if you have a plan and you execute it repeatedly, like, you know, okay, I'm drumming from three to five, or I'm making sure I'm drumming at least three times a week. Um, uh, and not on three days bunched together, you know, like I'm drumming every other day. If you hang to that routine consistently and you don't deviate from it often, you're going to get better results faster. And the sixth item on our list, because I gave up counting in reverse, listening. If you aren't new to drumming, you've probably spent a decent amount of time playing along to your favorite tunes. There's nothing wrong with this, I do it all the time, and it can sometimes be a really fun way to spend some time behind the kit. I make drum covers on this channel too, so duh, I play along to songs sometimes. However, playing along to a tune isn't something that's really going to push your drumming to improve in a meaningful way, at least not efficiently. It is equally fun, and in my opinion, much more useful to play with the song you're accompanying as if it's a musical partner. Listening to the music as a whole and trying to use the drum kit in, a, in at least semi-musical way. I know I can't expect too much from you guys. Uh, but, you know, try and listen for cool little things in the background that you can try to draw attention to with your playing. Uh, play fills that are different from the original track, but maintain the same energy. Make the song your own, damn it. You know, this is, this is your individual drumming experience. Take a song that you've heard and know well and try and say something with it. Don't just play along with it to gain the chops because you're already playing your rapid paradiddles and thinking you're super fast and then watching Mike Mangini and getting upset and we, we've all been there. It's okay. We're, we're here for you. Not only will trying to use the drum kit in a more musical way when playing along to songs make your drumming more interesting and diverse in the way it sounds, but it will make you a more apt musician and it's going to prepare you for writing and playing original music rather than for a career in drum covers. Oh, dude, you thought the sadness was going to end in this video? No, it, it's going to keep getting worse. I just, I, you know, I do what I can, guys. I do what I can. The seventh item on this list is self-recording. Uh, this one is said a whole lot, and yet I have it at this point in the list because I think it's understated immensely, almost shockingly. Uh, listening to recordings of your playing will catalyze improvement in your drumming, no matter what skill level you are. Uh, listening to recordings of your drumming from even a couple months ago can reveal progress you didn't know was taking place, and it can boost your confidence, leading to even more improvement at an even faster rate down the road. You don't need a cumbersome microphone setup, just your phone will do the trick. Uh, listen for things you're doing well, and even more so for the things that you can improve on or change in your playing. You know, do you have a tendency to be late on certain kick drum beats? Do you have a tendency to linger on certain drums too much in your fills? Do you not hit the cymbals enough in your fills? You know, do you, you, you know what? Where can you put more depth into your playing? These are just me. This is, I'm just rambling, but like these are just things that right off the top of my head, not even on the script, that like you can look for in your playing to make yourself better. Learning to analyze and assess your own performance in retrospect will lead to more effective decision making and a severe increase in just juicy grooviness behind the kit. Record yourself. It, it is probably one of the most effective tools for stimulating growth in your drumming that I've ever come across or had the opportunity to recommend to anybody. What a break! Danger, danger, you are now entering the proverbial top three.
All children and women, avert your eyes. And men too, you guys don't get a free pass on this one. You are about to hear Aiden's top three picks for the concepts that you should be aware of when you are trying to get better at drumming. Alright, so the first of our top three coming in at number eight or number three, however you want to look at it. Uh, number three, balance. <laughs> number eight, balance. <laughs> balance is a bit of a vague term. But in this instance, I'm actually just straight up talking about literal, physical, gymnast, balance beam, balance. Default balance. Nothing spiritual about it. Just balance. I mean, you can take it spiritual if you want, but like... Being comfortable and grounded behind the kit is as far as virtuosity and, you know, versatility goes, probably the most important aspect of your playing. If you're sitting in a balanced position, your limbs can be free to move more freely, with more confidence and with a lot less effort. Your body no longer has to focus on keeping you upright because you're balanced and so it can better respond to the sadistic polyrhythm that your brain is trying to give instructions for. Again, we know who we are. <laughs> this is a super important topic and one that is coming in a full length video that is really not too far out in the future. So definitely be looking forward to that. I'm gonna have a lot of fun with it and I hope you guys will too. Yeah, and when that video comes out, I'll be putting a little card up in the corner of this video um, just so that you guys can see it and get right to it from there. Just come back to this point in the video and just like, that's gonna be a super important video I want you guys all to see. last two I wanted to kind of dump one that I think is really grossly underrepresented but I also at the same time wanted to get a little philosophical with you guys for number nine and a little less crazy serious on you if that makes sense so number number nine or number two is g g getting jiggy with it no 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 getting jiggy with it oh you want me to stop oh you're gonna eat okay oh no have some goddamn fun behind the kit, young whippersnapper. Sure. Practicing can get a little tiring sometimes, especially when you've been doing it for 15 years like a certain someone I know. It gets really hard to settle on something that you want to work on and even harder to motivate yourself to work on things that you've been working on for a while. Um, and it's even harder sometimes to allow yourself a few just little nonsense practice sessions to just sit down and explore what you can do and maybe find a new pathway that you want to uh, keep in mind for the future. There is nothing wrong with just wandering into the unknown for a few just gloriously groovy practice sessions. If you're enjoying the process of learning, or even if you really aren't but you're pretending to anyways, uh, you're gonna end up doing better. And if you didn't enjoy it in the first place, you're probably going to end up enjoying it. This is going to make practice something that you look forward to, and as such, something that you can get more out of, put more into, which is why we practice in the first place. We, we practice to get somewhere, so let's enjoy the trip. If you're, if you're not enjoying yourself while you're drumming, then you're probably not going to be drumming with as much you know, vigor and life force for you probably already aren't drumming with 100% of what you have. So really, get happy, find something you enjoy to practice, and just really embrace the grind of getting better at this awesome instrument. This is not the most important one on the list per se, coming in at the last spot, but it is one that I don't see discussed unless it's specifically asked about. Um, and that's gonna be kit setup. Make sure you're playing on a kit that facilitates any kind of happiness whatsoever. <laughs> now, no, I'm not telling you to go out and buy a DW Performance Series uh, pure maple satin stained on lacquered amazing drum kit. Those are lovely, but <laughs> admittedly, then it's not that impactful on your drumming progress. I'm talking about where your stuff is. Uh, you know, like your drums and your cymbals. Those things, the things you hit. Uh, your drum kit should be set up in a way that maximizes effectiveness, not in a way that, like, looks cool. If your toms are making you reach awkwardly to hit them, don't just keep reaching awkwardly to hit them. 
move the drum closer to you, maybe. Just a thought. <laughs> it could take a good while, and you might spend like 11,000 millennia moving your hi-hat, then adjusting your chair, and moving your bass drum, and then adjusting your chair again. Hi-hat, chair, bass, hi-hat, chair, bass, hi-hat, chair, bass, chair, hi-hat. Ad infinitum. But when you sit down and feel relaxed and comfortable moving around your kit, your drumming will literally just jump in quality on the spot. The immediate jumping in your growth in drumming is gonna like get less prevalent, like less extreme the longer that you've been playing and the better your core strength is, the better your balance and technique is. But it never hurts to reevaluate your drum placement when you feel your progress starting to stagnate noticeably. All right, we're done. Thank you, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope it helped you find a somewhat satisfying, at least one satisfying approach to improving behind the kit. And I hope I was able to bring things up that you haven't heard before or hadn't heard the same perspective that I have on them yet. Uh, you know, I wanna bring something new here. I wanna bring you something that no one else does. As you can probably tell by my subscriber count and uh, you know, the fact that I have like, uh, you know, my, my, my first video that's still on this channel is like, uh, a month old or two, uh, this is a relatively new channel. Um, but I already have like a bunch of ideas I want to explore, uh, but I need to know that people want to see it first. Uh, like the video, share it around. Please do subscribe for more content. Uh, every single new subscriber is incredibly important to me, no matter uh, how many I have. At the time you're watching this video, like, you could probably be watching this like five years down the road, and I'm like one of the biggest drumming channels in the world, and I still care about your subscription. Uh, I, I don't just care about your subscription. Um, I also care about what you want and what you feel. So uh, this channel is meant to help you. Uh, leave a comment below telling me whether I overlooked anything or maybe if you think I'm just freaking wrong about anything on this list. Um, <clears throat> any questions are also welcome in the comments. I'll do my best to at least read them all uh, and, and respond to the ones that I you know, think deserve a response, which most of you should obviously be deserving a response because you're obviously not just going to go down there and type, haha, bad, or, or, or like, haha, no, 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 technique, blah, blah, blah. You're going to actually ask like really good questions and, you know, we're going to have a nice engagement together and we're going to come to some more conclusions. Maybe, you know, we'll, we'll make some progress, definitely. Yeah. But who knows, honestly, maybe what you ask could become the subject of a video. With that being said, I'm Aiden. Stay groovy. And I'll see you later, guys and gals. It could take you a while, and you might spend about 11,000 millennia moving your hi-hat. I freaking hate this thing so much. I hate it with a burning passion.